All right, everyone, welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, tackling something really significant, a major medical quest. If you think back, you know, to the early days of HIV, that diagnosis, it was often just filled with fear, almost like a sentence. And while we've seen these truly incredible advancements, uh, I mean, HIV becoming a manageable chronic condition with daily meds, that's huge. There's still that, that big question, what about a cure? You know, that dream of a permanent solution, a life completely free from leading daily medication, well, it's still driving a massive global effort. It really is. And uh, that dream feels like it's moving closer to reality now. A lot of that is thanks to the work of companies like, well, Gilead Sciences. Just to give you a sense of the scale here, yeah. we're talking about 39 million people around the globe living with HIV right now. And Gilead, they're a big name in HIV research, right? Known for those groundbreaking drugs, um, things like Truvada, Victarvi, Discovi. You've probably heard of them. But lately, their focus is really, really sharp. And they're not just talking about managing the virus anymore. They are seriously invested in finding an actual cure. Exactly. And that's what we're doing today in this deep dive. We want to look closely at the top five, arguably the most promising HIV cure trials that Gilead Sciences is currently leading. We're gonna try and unpack the science, uh, look at where these trials actually stand right now, and what it all could mean for the future, not just for HIV treatment, but maybe even how we tackle other tough diseases. Okay, let's unpack this. So let's start with the core problem. The big reason curing HIV has been so tricky, it comes down to this thing called the latent reservoir. What exactly is that? Why is it such a barrier? Right, the latent reservoir, Hmm. Think of it as HIV's secret hiding place. It's like the virus goes dormant, tucking itself away inside certain cells in the body. Mm -hmm. And our current treatments, the antiretrovirals people take daily, they're fantastic at stopping the active virus, the one that's out replicating. Mm -hmm. But they can't touch these hidden dormant cells. They're basically invisible to the drugs. So even if someone's viral load is undetectable, this reservoir is still there, ready to reactivate if treatment stops. So it's like a sleeper cell network for the virus? That's a good way to put it. And that's where the first strategy comes in, often called shock and kill. The idea is to, well, shock these dormant cells awake. Gilead has two key compounds here, GS986 and GS962, which is also known as Vesitolamod. These are what we call toll-like receptor agonists, specifically TLR7 agonists. TLR7 agonists, what do they actually do? So TLRs are like sensors on our immune cells. TLR7 specifically recognizes viral components. These agonists, they basically trigger that sensor. It's like sounding an alarm. The goal is to boost the immune system's activity and crucially, force that hidden HIV out of dormancy, flush it out into the open. Once it's active and visible, then other mechanisms, potentially the immune system itself or other drugs, can target and kill those infected cells. It's a core part of many functional cure strategies. Okay, shocking the virus out of hiding. Making it vulnerable, that makes sense. Where are these trials at? Have we seen any signs that this can work? Yeah, there's been some really interesting progress. Both GS96 and Vislavanod have been tested in uh, non-human primates and also in humans. And one particularly fascinating finding came from a monkey study. They found that GS986, when used alongside an HIV vaccine, actually led to a significant drop in the size of that viral reservoir. So it suggests these agents could be really vital tools for clearing out the reservoir, especially when you combine them maybe with vaccines or um, with another approach, broadly neutralizing antibodies. Okay, broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs, that sounds powerful, like a maybe a next generation weapon in the immune arsenal. Exactly, it's another key immune-based strategy. Gilead's lead candidate here is GS9722. This is what's called a first-in-class, broadly neutralizing antibody. Think of it like this. HLV is incredibly diverse. It mutates rapidly, creating lots of different strains, like it's constantly changing its disguise. Older antibodies might only recognize one or two specific disguises, but a broadly neutralizing antibody, it's engineered to recognize a part of the virus that doesn't change much across many, many different strains. So it can target a wider range of HIV variations. Precisely. It can neutralize lots of different types of HIV. And importantly, these BNAMs like GS9722 can also potentially target those latently infected cells we were just talking about. So what makes this specific one, GS9722, stand out from earlier attempts at antibody therapy? You mentioned it's first in class. Right. Well, a couple of things. It's been engineered for an improved half-life, meaning it stays active in the body for longer. That's huge for practical reasons, potentially less frequent dosing. And it also shows increased potency. So it's stronger and lasts longer. And importantly, it seems like it could work synergistically with those TLR agonists, the shock agents like mm. GS986. You shock the virus out and then the BNAB helps kill it. A kind of one-two punch. Where is GS9722 in terms of clinical trials? It's currently in phase one trials. 
So the main focus right now is on safety, figuring out the right dosage, and getting preliminary data on how well it impacts that viral reservoir. Early studies look promising, showing it can bind to a wide variety of HIV strains, which is absolutely essential if you're aiming for a cure that works globally. Right. So yeah, it's potentially a really key piece of a combination strategy, working alongside those latency reversing agents. Okay, now, this next area feels like it's straight out of science fiction almost. We're talking about gene editing. Here's where it gets really interesting. Oh, absolutely. This is definitely pushing the boundaries. Gilead isn't doing this alone. They're involved in several key collaborations exploring gene editing technologies. The most well-known is probably CRISPR-Cas9. The basic idea, and it's incredible, is to use these molecular scissors to actually go into our own cells and cut out the HIV DNA that's integrated itself into our genome. Literally deleting the virus's blueprint from our cells. That's the ultimate goal for some approaches. Or, alternatively, modifying our cells to make them resistant to HIV infection in the first place. For example, they're partnered with Sangamo Therapeutics. Sangamo works with something called zinc finger nucleases, another gene editing tool. They're focused on modifying a receptor on our immune cells called CCR5. Now, CCR5 is like the main doorway HIV uses to get inside these cells. If you can edit the gene for CCR5, maybe disable it or change the lock, you could potentially make those cells immune to HIV infection. Like locking the door so the virus can't get in? Exactly. And they also have a partnership with a company called Incitro. They use machine learning and AI combined with genetic data to model different HIV cure pathways. It's about using computation to try and figure out the best strategies, potentially speeding up the whole discovery process quite dramatically. These partnerships, focusing on actually editing genes, it really signals how serious Gilead is about finding a permanent fix, not just management, but an actual cure. It's a massive commitment, yeah, because the potential here is just profound. But we have to be realistic about the stage these are at. Most of this gene editing work is still preclinical, meaning lab studies or in very early stage human trials. A major, major challenge is delivery. How do you get these gene editing tools safely and efficiently only to the cells you want to target without causing off-target effects? Right. You need a very precise delivery system. Absolutely. Researchers are exploring things like using modified harmless viruses as vectors or tiny nanoparticles to carry the gene editing machinery to the right place. Mm -hmm. But if they can crack that delivery problem, I mean, the potential is a one-time treatment, a permanent functional cure, especially maybe for people newly diagnosed or those already in remission. It would utterly change everything. It really would. Okay, so from editing genes, let's talk about another really cutting-edge technology, one that became, well, a household name recently, mRNA. Right, mRNA technology. We all learned a lot about it thanks to the COVID-19 vaccines. Gilead is exploring this for HIV, too, through a partnership with Gritstone Bio. But here, it's not for a preventative vaccine. It's for a therapeutic vaccine. Okay, what's the difference? Therapeutic vaccine. So a therapeutic vaccine is given to people who already have the virus. The goal is to train their own immune system to fight it better. In this case, the mRNA vaccine is designed to teach the immune system, specifically the CD8 plus T cells, those are the killer T cells to recognize and destroy cells that are infected with HIV. It's similar technology to the COVID vaccines, using mRNA to give the body instructions to produce specific viral antigens, triggering a strong immune response. So you're boosting the body's own natural defenses against the virus that's already there. Where is this in development? It's also an early stage clinical development. Phase one trials are underway. They're testing it in people living with HIV who are already on standard treatment and have their virus suppressed to undetectable levels. And the hope here is, ah. what a functional cure again? That's the potential, yes. Yeah. If they can generate a powerful enough and durable enough immune response with this vaccine, mm -hmm. the idea is that the person's own immune system could then control the virus long term, even if they stop taking their daily antiretroviral pills. No more daily medication needed. That would be a functional cure. Okay, one more key area to cover. This one is a drug, but it's different. It might not be a cure by itself, but it sounds like a massive step forward and potentially crucial for future cure combinations. Lina Kapavir. Uh, yes, Lina Kapavir, also known previously as GS6207. This one is really exciting. Even though it's an antiviral drug, not strictly a cure strategy on its own, it's a first-in-class drug, meaning it works in a completely new way. It's a capsid inhibitor. Capsid inhibitor. How does that differ from existing HIV meds? So most current drugs target viral enzymes, like reverse transcriptase or integrase. Lina Kapavir targets the HIV capsid. The capsid is like the protective shell or core of the virus particle. 
It's essential for several steps in the virus's life cycle, assembling new virus particles, transport within the cell, getting into the nucleus, integration. By disrupting this capsid, lenacapavir messes up the virus at multiple points. It hits it early and late in its cycle. And the really headline-grabbing thing about lenacapavir is how long it lasts, right? That's the game-changer aspect, absolutely. It's being developed as a long-acting injectable, potentially just one injection every six months. Every six months? Wow, that's incredible compared to daily pills. It really is. Think about the implications for adherence. For people who struggle with taking pills every day, for access in different parts of the world, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And because it works differently, hitting the capsid, it's effective against virus that might be resistant to other drug classes. Plus, its versatility means it could be used in treatment for people who've tried many other drugs, possibly for prevention, and importantly, as a potential backbone in future cure regimens. You might combine it with those immune therapies or gene editing. Where are the trials for lenacapavir now? It's much further along. It's in phase three trials. Those are the large scale trials needed for approval. They're testing it in people who are new to treatment and also in people who have extensive treatment experience and drug resistance. The studies are called Capella and Calibrate. And the results so far have been really, really promising in terms of suppressing the virus effectively. So it's a major advance in management and a key potential partner for cure strategies down the road. Okay, so wrapping this all up. If you look at everything Gilead is doing here, the shock and kill, the BNABs, the gene editing, the mRNA vaccines, the long-acting drugs, it's clear they aren't just betting on one horse. Not at all. It's a really comprehensive, multi-pronged attack. They're not waiting for one single miracle. They're strategically hitting HIV from multiple angles, making treatment easier and longer lasting with drugs like lenacapavir, waking up the hidden virus with immune modulators, disarming it with powerful antibodies, trying to permanently erase it with gene editing, and training the body to fight back with vaccines. It's a full court press. And for the, what was it, 39 million people living with HIV, what's the takeaway message from all this research? I think the message is one of profound hope, really. Mm -hmm. A universal cure, one that works for everyone, everywhere. That might still be some years off. Let's be clear about that. But each of these trials, each of these approaches we've talked about, represents a significant real step forward. The progress is tangible. It genuinely feels like a cure is moving from just being possible to being, well, probable. The momentum is there. And that offers incredible hope for millions around the world. It really does. So think about this. What does this concerted push against HIV tell us about how medical innovation is evolving and how we might approach other diseases that seem right now just completely intractable? Are we maybe entering a new era where incurable is just a temporary status? Definitely something to keep thinking about. We encourage you to keep following these developments. It's an exciting time.